Hello to all my friends out there. Happy Valentine's Day. I love this holiday. Even though I don't have a husband or a boyfriend, I've never had one. I'm one of those people. We had one other, I think there's only one, Uncle Bob. <laughs> I think I took after him. I don't think he was ever married, never. Uncle Bob was my mother's oldest brother. And so I've told you about the ranch on my mom's side. And so Uncle Bob, um, for one whole generation, uh, hung on to the ranch. And then uh, the ranch was dispersed and there was 13 children. So anyway, so Uncle Bob was never married. I'm um, Rhoda Bobette. <laughs> so happy Valentine's Day. And when I get home, I am going to make some festive stuff for Valentine's Day. I don't know what. In a day, the only important thing I have to do is walk two hours. I'm 66 years old, and if I do not exercise, something really, really bad is going to happen to me. <laughs> so, I want to tell you something in case you didn't see my... This is a, a little light, and it puts out a lot of light. They're $4 at Walmart. Let's see, is the... I can't, it's got a, yeah, okay. It's also got like a red light to it. So this, and then the other great thing I found are these flashlights for a dollar at Walmart and they come with batteries. So those are well worth ha having uh, for it at home in case the power goes out. So I'm going to stock up um, on a few extra ones of those. Um, when I'm up there walking because those could really come in handy and then I buy the batteries at Dollar Tree Okay, so last night, you know, you saw me in my car and uh, When I was out there it was I was out there a little later than I normally am I try to return home before dark Especially during the week because out where I live the traffic is brutal and I noticed that um, a lot of people who live in their cars were parked there. When I was out there about 8.30 or 9, so I was in my car all day long. And um, I don't know why it surprised me, but there was a lot of people parked there, I guess, looking up. They probably parked there overnight. And what I noticed they do is in the back, all the windows have um oh, what is that stuff there's a guy parked next to me with it but i don't want to show you because that's rude but the windows are um you know darkened so you can't see in so probably a good idea better than my walmart bags i was talking about garbage bags regular garbage bags um but um out there where i parked you don't really need those but Okay, so today, uh, I have a half a sandwich. I'm going over there to see if there's any half price sandwiches. But I bought this tuna, Walmart. I could eat that in the car. And then I have chips with no dip. You know, this dip thing is fattening. And then I have these little uh, granola bars for snacks. So if I get hungry today, which probably won't because I'm just going to walk today, but... I have I have it in my bag. I bought a new bag yesterday, all these, because mine was getting kind of messed up. My expense, 94 cents. So I have two good meals. Two of my best car meals are tuna and chips. And then the other one is peanut butter sandwich with um, string cheese and a banana. That is a really good car um, meal. Okay, so now, happy Valentine's Day, happy Valentine's Day, happy Valentine's Day. I dispensed all my gifts a day or two ago. If you would like to see the dog with what I gave him for Valentine's, go to my Instagram. I don't leave the stuff up forever. I don't like my Instagram and Twitter all junked up. 
Okay, so now we're preparing for three things. So what are these three things? Grand solar minimum, depression, and the judgments. So you might go, well, I, that's asinine. Well, I would rather be prepared myself. Oh, I want to tell you something. Um, you know, one of the things I can do is I can buy stuff at Marshall's really cheap. I bought some lands in... Um, pants out there for one dollar and I sold them on eBay and then I need a repair I bought these Halston sunglasses see the little things are missing but I can get those fixed at Walmart see I still have the tags on here let's see if it says how much I paid these were originally $78 but I think I paid six dollars but I am keeping these and when I'm done with them I will sell them for three dollars okay the grand solar minimum I think what we're seeing in a way is is the grand solar minimum. This is year two of 11 years. And they're saying it's not a mini ice age. You can't say that because we're in year two. It could get colder and colder. Even a couple degrees is, is they go, well, it'll get a couple degrees, you know. But still, that could be pretty miserable. If you live in a car and you get a van, you can insulate your van. What I would do is I would just get the insulation and I would just, you saw my uh, tricky um, Walmart. You know, I wouldn't invest a lot of money, but I would insulate my van. Okay, so it's going to last 11 years. We're in year two. Okay, when the lockdown happened, the <laughs> lockdown, you know, it's like solitary, really. But anyway, by doing that, they cut the consumption because the restaurants would buy a ton of food. Um, I think uh, President Biden is doing a good job so far. I didn't vote for him, I voted for President Trump. Sorry, you guys, I know that pissed off 50% of the people, but, and, and I'm glad he wasn't impeached. However, I think President Biden is doing a good job to ensure the survival of the poor. So I have to give him credit so far. So now, in preparation for the uh, Grand Solar Minimum, food, and I think countries that are going to be hit hard, cold countries, Korea's freezing. My dad is was in the Korean War. Uh, there are underground tunnels straight from Korea to China. So Korea is nothing really but China. But places like China, Korea, Russia could be hit hard by the grand solar minimum and they know it too. Okay, food. So the best preparation with food is to stockpile. Okay, a lot of us go by the Bible, which people think is asinine who are not Christians, but in a way it's an historical, of it's it was history. So there were seven years of famine and seven years of plenty. So if we go into this, um, grand solar minimum it could be years of scarce food so you know we want to stockpile as much food up as we can and money uh in the bible i think it was joseph he had a 20 percent so you want to aggressively stockpile food water and remember 16 drops of bleach to one gallon water hope it would never come to that and so you know if something happens with the water you have to really kind of relocate you know if the water source is contaminated shelter and in your shelter you need heat my friend you know the one i was trying to help um she didn't have any butane Um, one of the ladies, we were talking about camp stoves. And one of the ladies was saying, you know, the butane is $7, like $7 a day. I assume that's if you buy the small ones. So, um, but I'm still looking for camp gear. You know, that was a pretty nice uh, sleeping bag. It wasn't the cheapest. Uh, they have cheap sleeping bags at the Walmart up there in Grossmont Center on sale now for 19 bucks. So I got my good sleeping bag for $25. But you have to shop the thrift stores all the time. So food, water, shelter, gas. 
It's very hard to store gas if you don't have a garage or anything, but you have to have gas and cash. Small bills of cash. Just start hoarding them, you know, hoarding a little change. I saw this guy and um, he hoarded his change for a year and he had like $1,500. Okay, so another thing is storms. Uh, the snow and when it melts floods and if the if the snow starts you have to know the waterways if the the snow starts melting and the the water runs north to south generally like down here it, it flows straight to the Gulf of Mexico however this is the high Sierra and until we had the Colorado River there it was like a high desert Nonetheless, you know, it's going to flow right down to the uh, Gulf of Mexico. So if there was a massive snow, and, and a lot of people are saying this could happen, and the dams breach, you have to be prepared to withstand 12 feet of water. Okay, so that's enough on the Grand Solar Minimum. Okay, so the Grand Solar Minimum could cause famines. That was the point of that. So we have, I think we're going to start seeing famines around the world. And in places we really wouldn't expect either. Like, are you going to eat your oil and your Bitcoin? I think that's our strength there, unless our crops start to be breached. Uh, and usually what comes with famine is disease, so that's super bad. Uh, cold, you know. Okay, next thing, depression. Okay. When, when there's a depression, there's a mass unemployment. We're seeing that now. No food and no shelter. Uh, never in a time, I think people, you know, never in a time have we seen such a massive uh, lack of shelter. Now that's scary with the grand solar minimum coming. So you have to, like, what I would say is like, if you cannot, we had it like in the apartments I lived in, I mean, these, I can't tell you how many um, people were living in one apartment. And I said to the owner, I am the best tenant you've got because I'm the only person living in here. And, and it was like, yeah, so, you know, and the insinuation that I was selfish because I had a two bedroom apartment. So you guys, you have to rent from someone you can trust. So, like, why should, you know, you're, it's like you're hogging this apartment that I have been paying you for 16 years when, like, two families can live in there, you selfish hog. Yes. So, if a depression is coming, we have to prepare for a lower standard of living. This is why a lot of people don't want to give up their credit because they know damn well it's going to lower their standard of living because they're living beyond their standard of living. So it's best to adjust now. Like you may think, you know, my car living is idiotic. And I always say, if I am the last man standing, then I'm going to have to trust God. But, you know, my life... I didn't have a husband with a job. I didn't have anybody. I had to uh, rely on myself. So now in preparation for the depression, you want to stockpile over and over and over. My stockpile of food has saved me because if you have shelter and you have food and you have water and you have heat, that's all you really need. I mean, even if your shelter is a car, you have shelter. I mean, people were cave people. People lived in teepees. I mean, this is a step up from a teepee. <laughs> a lot of uh, cars have heat and air conditioning. Okay, so we want to stockpile as much food as possible. In fact, prepare for seven. I, I saw this, it was Perry Stone saying that, you know, this disease could last seven years. Well, the the uh, famines would, in the Bible would last seven years. Not one year, not two years. The depression lasted 10 years. Hoard cash and be very careful with your resources, which is easier said than done. Um, I worked in low-end shops and what they were was devoid of 
of resources like hair salons with no hair and nail salons with no hand soap. No toilet paper. I mean, there was no dispensary. Speak. I w went to uh, nice salons, you know, when I would look, you know, was looking and it looked very, very nice. And, you know, I would go into the back room, you know, the dispensary. What I saw, I would want to scream. That is not a, a salon dispensary. That is a nightmare. And we're going to be seeing more and more. Like what you're going to see is you're going to see this outward uh, prosperous look, but it's fake. Okay, so now that is enough on the depression. We're going to revisit that. Okay, now the other thing is the judgments. Okay, so I have been studying the judgments. And so you might be going, I don't believe in the judgments. I think that's idiotic. Okay, the judgments were brought, it was on the um, Egyptians, mainly because of idol worship. So I was studying Madame Blavatsky, and she was basically a channeler. She was an occultist from a young age. And her, I think it was her first book, is Isis Unveiled. Okay, in... The Egyptians, there was an actual idol god, and it was Isis of medicine and science. And the people worshipped these, and uh, they got a terrible judgment. They were full of sores, you know, I think it was. So basically, Isis unveiled was her, a lot of people said she just stole her information all over the place from Hindus, from Buddha, whatever, which was probably true. And uh, we see in our culture, medicine and science taking a, a seat even above the most high God. We're going to rely on our medicine and our science and everything is going to be okay until the judgments strike. So a lot of us are saying, okay, I, I will consider a vaccination. Okay, I get medical treatments, but I know that no other time in history, for one thing, people didn't live this long, were people as dependent on medical care. And, it, and a lot of people, I was shocked, you know, the Fauci effect. People, people were inspired by him to go to medical school. Nonetheless, uh, it's possible that some judgments could uh, fall. Okay, another thing is witchcraft. I think if all of us are honest, there is an increased witchcraft. And... Um, and just like magic and Satanism in the U.S. And so these would also bring a judgment. What we might be seeing is we might be seeing like houses and places falling. And then some people will be totally okay somehow, like miraculous. Not to say that some of us might be killed. But mainly if you're in a very uh, evil environment... Um, I, I was around a lot of witchcraft and voodoo in my job. Like, you know, in the places I worked, show up and do your job. It's, it's much more effective, but no, they could not do that. So I was, uh, I've been around it. So I know when I see it. So, and I believe that witchcraft will bring a judgment. And people are not turning from the uh, worship. Um, basically, I think, you know, you're trying to get um, powers. <laughs> Even enchantments are not a good idea. Okay, now the not last thing that I want to discuss for today is pornography. Okay, people are, are doing pornography. But the problem with pornography is... It gets worse and worse, and it's addictive. And at the at the core of it is sex addiction. So I just want to mention uh, 
I, I remember the 10 um, compulsive behaviors. Okay, I had a drinking problem, so I was always on the lookout for all of these. And I think at the core of, of a lot of pornography is uh, sex addiction. And uh, there is help for it, uh, but a lot of people don't want help. <laughs> Okay, here's what I was watching for. Anorexia, I obviously don't have that issue. Bulimia, that is a bad one. Overeating, uh -oh. <laughs> Mainly though, in my life, um, like with the alcoholism, I said you are obviously allergic to alcohol. So with the overeating, you know, I have to watch sugar, which you know I love cakes, pies, cookies, uh, and carbs. Okay, compulsive spending. That's bad. It, it can happen. Alcoholism, drugs, over-exercising. You know, I'd be in the um, self-help groups, and, and some of the people would be like um, overactive children. Like, uh, what is that called? And, and they were just like exercising. The over-exercising and exertion stuff usually went more with drug addiction. Sex addictions, hoarding, uh-oh. The, the solution to hoarding is no more bringing stuff in and getting rid of stuff. So that's what I've been trying to do. Double checking, triple checking uh, stuff, being very compulsive, compulsive cleaning. I wish I would get that one. <laughs> and gambling. I've actually known quite, in the salons, I have actually known quite a few gambling addicts because um, we have so many casinos. And the one that stands up in my mind is he was just like, he was winning, winning. He could not lose. He won a BMW, he won tons of money. But then when it was all done, said and done, he was about $100,000 in debt due to gambling, but he was able to stop himself. So, you know, the casinos are so tricky. They sent a letter, um, if you don't gamble some more, um, we're going to remove you, your diamond status. Okay, with your diet, I mean, they're very tricky. You get free trips and 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 shows and in Las Vegas and all this stuff. And after all this, why, all this, his wife goes, well, do you think we should, we should do some gambling after the husband was addicted? He goes, no, it's not a good idea. Uh, my uh, mother-in-law's Avon lady, she got older. She um, lost everything, the house, everything, and ended up in a nursing home. So gambling is treacherous. I could never get that one because the cigarette smoke almost kills me. Any habits. I've known someone who almost killed himself with energy drinks. And he, and he went to the emergency room and they saved him barely. And on the way home, he stopped and he started drinking them again. They're very addictive. So you have to be careful. I want to mention one thing. Okay, I love, I'm trying to find white watches. This is a fashion watch and white sunglasses. And this is, I sell these at the swap meet. This is, see how this is big? This is an ankle bracelet and I sell those too. Uh, when I buy jewelry in bulk, I get a lot of this stuff. I almost said S-H-I-T. <laughs> okay, you guys, please like, comment, and subscribe. And God bless you all.